Um, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, Industrial Revolution put this country in the forefront of economic growth and prosperity for the best part of a century. And the reason why that part of our history was so prosperous and enjoyed such growth is that we were first in the innovation and application of innovation that the Industrial Revolution produced. And just as we were first in the Industrial Revolution, it is essential to the welfare and prosperity of this country that we are first or among the first in the digital revolution. And how we place ourselves in the forefront of that critical national mission is a task that we need to consider very carefully indeed, particularly, if I may say so, post-Brexit. The national crusade on which we will be embarked over the next 10 or 15 years will be a crusade for productivity. Productivity is the shibboleth for economists and will be for us as a nation making its way outside the European Union, however close our collaboration and relationship with it will be. And digital technology, and specifically the application of digital technology, is the holy grail which will enable us to prosper in that broad and new future. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've heard a number of, as of aspects from extremely distinguished and experienced and knowledgeable people in this field. But it seems to me, reading a lot over the last few days of reports, government initiatives, pea soups, alphabet soups of funds, Innovate UK, industrial strategies, and, and all of these things, that it really comes down to a series of quite simple principles. One of which, I completely agree with Stuart, is that the government needs to measure its involvement in a manner that practically helps. And it seems to me that there are a number of things that government can do. The, one of the things that a, a company recently said to me in my own constituency is, well, Jeffrey, we've come up with these ideas. We're developing these ideas, but how on earth do we protect our intellectual property? Now, our system of protecting intellectual property, when you come up with a new idea, is cumbersome, <laughs> archaic, um, belongs to the 19th century, even with, no doubt, the benevolent involvement of the European Union and its directives in it. We need to streamline it so that the chap or the couple of guys in their sitting room who've come up with a brilliant idea can very easily protect it. And then we need to give them the means to convert that idea into a practical application. And then, and this is what was most exciting about the Industrial Revolution, if you're a historian, as I was, uh, and that is the unwillingness of the management in these com companies. If you go up to East Shropshire and Birmingham, the reason places like that were so exciting in the early and middle 19th century is the willingness of a new emerging industrial middle class to embrace that technology to use it as part of generating their prosperity. And we've got to get, as was said, I think, by Toby, all kinds of companies in all four sectors to believe that they, too, are digital technology companies. Because it's not just confined solely to the new high-tech companies who are coming up with the ideas <laughs> and who are protecting their intellectual property. So what can government do? Well, I think it's doing quite a lot. It's uh, the new uh, science and innovation audit for the southwest of England identified this area as uh, having great uh, opportunities uh, for a digital innovation hub. I think the digital enterprise zones are working. I think the tax credit scheme for research and development, which now supports something like 14 billion, 80% of our R&D in this country, are good I innovations, but we need to do a great deal more. And part of what the government can and will do will be influenced by events, organizations, and initiatives like these. I want to pay tribute, if I may, it's off, not often I do it, to a colleague of mine, Gary Streeter, who led, who led <laughs> us so strongly in the House to deliver to number 10 the Southwest Growth Charter. And I think these initiatives are part of what government needs, which is to be told 
what you need, not government telling you what you need. We need to be told, what is it that you want? What practical measures, intellectual property laws, freeing up of planning laws, um, infra digital infrastructure, in a rural area has already been said, digital infrastructure is critical because we're never going to get, I have news for Luke, we're never going to get a high-speed electrified rail line, certainly not for the next 10 or 15 years, but what we can get is better digital infrastructure. So these kinds of forums help the government understand what it is you need. Don't let the government tell you, you tell us. So thank you for telling us today. The message will go back. It's practical things we need that will keep out of your way, particularly the business and entrepreneurs, and facilitate and assist the task. Thank you.